Hello everyone and let me welcome you to another video. This time it is a 1v1 map uh, without Shumi on it. Actually, I'm playing against a random person here uh, and Shumi is here in uh, background voiceover with me. So he can be the, the entertaining part of this video as I am not usually that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello everyone. All right, so uh, I've chosen to play 1v1 this time because Shumi is a little more preoccupied than I am usually uh, these days and therefore uh, since we want to keep our YouTube channel growing and we want to make it feel alive and as we said before we want to show the game in a better light I think it's a good idea to release a little more frequent videos and therefore yeah one we were uh, one we won here we go <laughs> yes thanks for the great introduction i like to be called the fun part of the video <laughs> yeah yeah i um uh, i told myself that i'm gonna be nice to you today it's it's nothing oh. you can get used to though <laughs> oh i'll try to be nice too then oh that's a challenge now oh it is it really is now uh as you Moreover, I'm watching your your, your gameplay, so yeah. more more of a challenge. As you, as you can see on the on the recording now, uh, I have actually chose to change my playstyle a little uh, because, well, we are uh, we are still in a learning curve regarding this game, right? And I have previously expressed that I used to be building, for example, two logging camps. Uh, no. I am building two right now, and I have been building three before. Uh, two are enough for me, as you can see uh, on this video, and you will continue to see so. Uh, now, I have uh, started to ignore building tools on most maps, but this one is an example of uh, something where we really need them immediately, because as you can see right now, I am actually already proceeding with my military to somewhat take care of those bandits who are protecting a landmark. This landmark in particular on this 1v1 map is extremely important. Why would you say so, Shumi? This landmark grants you 9 weapons, 3 of each kind, and it does that every 5 minutes. So if you can assemble the, the tools that it needs, which is 5 tools, Every, uh, every five minutes you can grow a steady army uh, without needing to build any mines. Which is extremely powerful and you can, you can really um, generate your military way faster and way sooner than you, than you get your, uh, your production up. What you can see right now is me building a forager right next to those bushes filled with berries. That is extremely important as well because uh, you actually boost, you feed your toolmaker with these berries and that makes the production twice as effective. Uh, which is the reason why my toolmaker tool is still stopped, it's paused even though it's been built ages ago. I need my uh, berries to be ready for them. Would you do that as well, Shun? I would do that as well. I don't know if I would stop it right now, though. Okay. Because, as you, as you see right now, you are almost done with, uh, with the landmark. Uh-huh, yeah. And the sooner you start making tools right now, the quicker you uh, will have your first right army. There. Oh, yeah, that? Yeah. Yes. I messed up right there. I thought I, yeah, I, clicked, I clicked a little further, but I did not. <laughs> Doesn't matter, no, I, I will, I will still get it. But yeah, you, you are, yes, you are, you are right, you are right. I wasn't as fast as I could have been. I should have probably <clears throat> rushed those berries way faster than I did. But also a possibility. But to be yes. to be honest, when I was watching you playing this map before, you didn't go for the berries at all. I did go for. Did the you? I definitely I... did. Yes, that was the only thing uh, I took from that side, the berries. Yeah, I, I must have missed that. Yes, uh, the the game that Terranix is referencing is a game I played previously on the same map against one of our uh, 
players from our community on of our Discord. Which is a great uh, uh, time to promote our Discord once more. Well, well, actually, it's not our Discord, so to say. It's not only ours. It is actually a community Discord server which is focused on this game in particular. Uh, it actually. Uh, doesn't belong to us, it belongs to everyone within the community, right? Yes, it is. It is a community Discord. Now... Uh, did you did you play someone from the Discord channel here? Did I... Uh, excuse me? Uh, is your opponent from the Discord ah, channel no, too? No, it's a random no. guy. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, since we're uh, talking for a moment about the Discord channel, server to be precise, um, there's one thing I should have mentioned, uh, I want to mention, and that is uh, that is uh, we actually managed to add a ranked system into the server, right? We did. It was a lot of fun to uh, to add that, and now playing those rank those ranked games, it does add a little bit of the heartbeat into the yeah, game. Yeah. It's not an empty game anymore. Exactly. So, as some of you may know, if you have already played this game. Uh, the settlers currently don't have um, any sort of ranked mode or ELO system or something like, well, something more competitive, so to say. So we've decided, in the meanwhile, before the developers add this, these systems, uh, to make some of our own. And therefore the Discord community and the ranked uh, bot, which is somewhat, is, is a supervisor of that, so to say. Uh, now we've played, we've tested this on a 4v4 map and uh, what, what would you say about this 4v4 experience in general that will eventually end up on this channel as well? Yes, there will be one video from the 4v4 games and I cannot say that I love them. There needs to be something added, there, uh, but still we played, uh, played with some people that were very nice in the game, which made it very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, if, if Ubisoft watches that, maybe balance some of those 4v4 maps, but the game's still amazing. Yes. <laughs> I really doubt they will watch it, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's already a second video, they will, oh, maybe third, I don't know. Um, they will have to watch some of them, right? Right, yeah. So, <laughs> you might actually notice another change in my playstyle right there. I'm not building another warehouse, not immediately at least. Because the thing I've recently learned is that you don't really need so many of them. You, if, you, if you're getting this, uh, this alert on your houses that uh, they are way too far away from your warehouse, it isn't usually such an issue. As you will no. see in this uh, in this game i think yes but let's talk a little bit about the uh, the beginning that you went for yeah. here you went for um quick wood and a little bit later for for the stone you build your houses you're actually still building them which is great uh and then you rushed towards the iron side of this map uh, th there are two there are two sides to this map there is an iron side iron coal and there is a gold gem side which, the left which side from has... our angle of view sorry to cut you off from our angle yeah. of view the iron and coal is obviously to the left as i'm expanding there yes. and uh the right side is filled with what did you say again uh, gems and I, I didn't know that to be to be honest. I'm not playing so many of those <laughs> uh, of those one v one uh, maps. Yeah, and you went here for once again army, which is definitely the uh, the easier way of playing the game. If you start just starting, don't really go for gold and gems so early in the game, since that needs you to defend from your enemy for a long while. But it's also very powerful. You might eventually end up making uh, the gem or, or gold production anyway, but only if your enemy is somewhat good. I mean, uh, since you will most probably, as I am right now, rush the, the military, if you'll take our advice, um, you will end up eventually with one of two scenarios, in one of two scenarios. Either it's gonna be your enemy unprepared and easy to kill, 
are very much prepared for your invasion and then you will need to probably for either fall back or somewhat destroy each other's armies and then it, it will come to those gems and gold because that's the difference uh, in the production you'll have to create. Exactly. If your opponent uh, defends your initial rush, if you're rushing, like uh, like some of us do in the beginning of the game, if your if your opponent uh, survives the initial rush, then you do really have problems while building the army because this will be a weak army. They will have no upgrades. You may go for one or two researches, but there uh, this will be a army without bigger upgrades. And if you go for gold and gems, you are more it is simpler for you to go for the upgrades and therefore your army will be upgraded and after a short while exactly as sizable as that of the rusher then again those are not the only possible strategies uh, the other strategy we could talk about is actually building uh, building your production based on trade which would be a great way to do so with uh, the Maru faction, because their harbor, which is needed for trading, is cheaper, right? It is. Harbor costs 50%. Harbor is the most expensive uh, building in this game, and for Maru it costs 50% of the uh, of the cost of other factions, which is huge. It is very huge, because the uh, I believe it costs 20, 20 wood, 20 stone, and uh, five tools combined with it for ev ten tools. It is ten tools. Are you sure? Yes, it is. I would swear it's five only, but we need to look mm -hmm. into that. I I would swear so. <laughs> well, insert a photo right here of of the harbor costing ten tools for your beloved Elari. It might be. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would have already been producing your troops right if if i was to build these berries yes. sooner and d if i wasn't stopping the production of the toolmaker you have you would probably have your army coming out right now yes you could have done that too actually you uh, you made eight uh, tools and only then sent your engineers yeah yeah but yes if you've built your uh, berries even sooner and started producing the tools even sooner you would have had the army about five minutes, maybe not that long, two minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, however, I just, I sometimes like to take my time. As you can see, I'm playing it a little safe, building this tower. I'm very uncertain whether, whether to build it or not, but uh, I think I'm gonna go with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, insider, insider information, we did talk about the t uh, towers previously uh, between the Daranix and myself and I said that they are not as useful and so Daranix does slowly change his religion. On the other hand, I've just finished my game of uh, the Ruined City, which was the map we've mm -hmm. recorded before and the towers are incredible in here. I've killed 50 of enemy scouts, uh, scouts with those towers and if I was to go uh, for for military production right, uh, right of the, out of the start, I wouldn't win that because I wouldn't have so many of these. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it depends, it, it comes to that that it's dependent on the map layout you're playing and uh, also yeah. just to your general playstyle. Yes. Yes. Uh, for for example, right as you said, if you're going for trade, you do need to survive a while longer without any army, which means yeah. that you probably need an, uh, a tower. That is true. That is true. Then again, I've been I've been thinking about the the placements of those towers. Most enemies. Hmm, I'm not sure. It's always the best, I guess, to build those towers. Uh, inside of some choke, choke points, right? So the enemy can't uh -huh. go through and can't reach any exactly. of your production. But if you are in a position where there are no choke points, I think building the tower like I did right there, well, there are some choke points, but I didn't want to build so many towers. I just wanted to uh -huh. build one. So I built it next to the warehouse. 
And I think that is it can protect it a little bit. Although I didn't build it as cl close as I could have. I think you did. You did move it to the closest spot. Yes, but there's still a road. <clears throat> I might have cut a, the road as well. Uh, maybe, yes. I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, that is uh, that is a good placement. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, how about... Um, well, if an, an opponent attacks you and he attacks the side where you produce your army, if he does that, you're probably screwed if he uh, finishes... Oh, oh, I was wrong. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, if he destroys your army production. And that turret will do nothing. Mm. Uh, how about... Uh, would you maybe defend the army production instead of your warehouse instead? Mm. Maybe. Yeah. Because that, that's something that can save your warehouse. That is true. That is true. What's up? You are, yeah, you are absolutely right. If you actually have this production going, because if you don't, yeah. they will just destroy the warehouse and your production is gone. <laughs> Correct. Well, if, uh, if if they destroy your warehouse, then the game's done. Uh, here's the thing that I was wrong about, though. The nine units that you can get for five uh, tools, right. you get that every four minutes, not five. Hmm. I think I'm not going to be able to focus on that, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not what? sure. I'm not sure with these one v ones. It's fast. It's quick. I like mm -hmm. to take my time. I really like the longer games where I can build my production. So, yeah, I I'm not sure whether I'm going to play more uh, a lot of these. <laughs> Uh, I think if you want to have your time to build out your production, you do need to find yourself an opponent who, like, who can actually play, who can stop your rush. That is true. And so that you, that is true. you have to stop his rush. That too. is true. If this opponent is actually capable, oh, it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it, to be honest. His economy is half, no. uh, half as big as mine. So, Which could still mean, disclaimer, which could still mean he just rushed army and he like will rush you standing. really quick. But he probably didn't. That is true. Uh, I think he still would have had more. Not sure. Not sure. Anyway, we'll see how it ends up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's 17th minute and I'm just producing first troops based on those landmark uh, landmark weapons. So that's that's not the fastest. Yes. Not the worst, but not no, the fastest. But yeah, 17 minutes for for the first unit is actually quite quick. We should talk about this map a little further. Do you think this layout... Do you, what would you do when you get get your first yes. army troops going? Um, great question. That would depend on how I evaluate my opponent. Yeah, that's if true. My, if, if I know my opponent is weak, I would just crash through, uh, through those rebels that defend him from me and I would try to attack him. If that wasn't the case, if I thought, thought my, my opponent actually could play, mm -hmm. um, which I mostly do, uh, I would first crash into the middle where you get 10 more units. That's uh, five uh, units that are good at destroying houses and buildings and towers and five, five healers. That is true. That is true. I think that's what I'm actually going to do. Even though... Oh, so we will see that. Yeah, yeah. Even though this opponent isn't really the best. And I, yeah. Let's, let's stop. Let's pause at that for a moment. Do you think this... Uh -huh. Because it's been discussed in many other <laughs> games, in Age of Empires as well, for example. Do you think this... Um, yep. Watching the stats and That's letting cool. those stats, like... Mm, give you a hint at what you're looking for with this opponent. Do you think it's sort of cheating? Do you think it should be forbidden? <laughs> um, huh, that is a great question. I... Hmm. You're not sure. Great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I have no strong strong opinion about that because I, I, I am using them. Yeah. Because they give me information, of course. Uh, and I don't know if I would like 
to play a game where I don't get them. No, I think they are actually necessary. I think for a well-balanced game, they are necessary. Mm. Because, uh, here is the take, because if you wouldn't get those stats, you will not know what your opponent is going for. And if you're going for stuff like trading, you do need to be prepared for a rush. Yeah, you would have and to play more cash. you stuff. don't know, yes, yes. If, if you know then that your opponent is rushing, hmm. which, which you can do thanks to the points, uh, you know that you have to defend. If you wouldn't know that, well, you're kind of screwed. You, you do need to build those towers, which slow you down, and it, it, it's, it's a pain. No, I think those points are good. Hmm. I would actually like to have the option to, in the, at least in those ranked games, when the developer team adds uh, the, the option to play ranked games, uh, officially into the game, I think, yep. I think it would be interesting to not have this option, to have it hidden. Mainly because hmm. it feels harder, and I think ranked games should be harder. Well, the rank games will be harder because the Where opponents will be able to play the that, game. That is true, that is true. Will be skilled at the game. Well, how's the matchmaking, by the way? Do you feel like um, you're being... Have you ever played against someone who's, for, exa for example, like 10 or more levels lower than you? Less experienced? Um... Because I, I think I didn't. Since I am since, since I am level 12 right now, uh -huh. no, I have played with someone who was almost 20 levels higher than me when Whoa. I was level 6. Wow, wow. Was it <laughs> yeah, in the I, first day of, yes. of your gameplay? Like, or no, at the beginning? no. So uh, at the beginning of, of the Settlers, some players didn't have problems with levels and I did. So I played through the whole campaign uh -huh. and a bunch of online games where I did not get my uh, EXP. Oh, yeah. So I was level 2 when I finished my campaign. I was level 3, I think, when I uh, when I joined the Discord mm -hmm. server. Uh, and I, I just looked like a noob uh, when I played people who were level 19, 20 mm -hmm. and actually went to be went into beating them yeah yeah i think the level level he, in here doesn't stand for anything at this point to be honest no so let's let's go back a little and let's talk about what's going on in this match for a moment so as you can see i have actually built some sort of food production behind my military production and that's mainly be because you actually want to boost your call uh, how yes. are you building your coal boosting, Shumi? Um, you mean... The, uh, okay, well, let's talk about everything then. <laughs> I think that's the best uh, solution yeah. there. First of all, there is one bakery and one, yes. uh, one farm for, one, uh, for, for two coals, uh, coal mines. That is enough. Uh, even though one... Um, What's it called? Yeah. The mill. One mill Rich can mill. hold two. Yeah, windmill. Uh, one mill can hold two farms and produce into two bakeries. Although, if you're playing Larry, and you know you will be, exp I usually expect myself to expand and to build research. So therefore, if yeah. you already have a windmill, one bakery, and one. Um, farm, I usually uh -huh. build another farm and another bakery after these three, these initial ones. Because as you said, uh, yeah, as you've said before, this wind bill can take it. It will actually produce uh -huh. everything, uh, enough, enough flour from those, from those uh, farms. And even if you got a little extra spare uh, wheat from those farms, you can actually use the, use it for the first research of uh, I believe it's for the research of attack damage or health. health. Yeah, it's, it's for health. health. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, you can do that. I normally just stop the windmill for a second. Yeah, yeah, that, that is understandable. But I, I like yeah. to have my well, extras. <laughs> Yes, well, with one uh, with one coal mine which you are you have built here. Actually, there are four coal mines in here. There, are, there's a lot yeah. of coal in this mine, but you've built only one, I think. So far, no, you yes, yeah, yes, you've built only one. 
uh, and you the one bakery one farm and one bakery would still overproduce for that one coal mine. Now you could see that I've put down two more uh, residences to be built and destroyed them immediately afterwards. That is because I have zero carriers, zero, zero idle carriers to be precise, and those uh, that means for me that uh, I shouldn't really expand my building, uh, my let's say okay. start new buildings, uh, because that would only make more of your carriers busy. You won't be able to produ uh, produce um, to, to produce any military. Your production lines will get stuck, and it's just not good in general. So be aware mm -hmm. if you are bu building your residences constantly. I usually have one being built by one engineer, and the other one is in queue, so my uh, carriers can uh, bring those necessary materials to be built. But no more yep. than that, unless I can afford it, unless I need to, uh, to rush more more residences like I need to right now, which I actually shouldn't have um, done. I have a question. What? Uh, so you've built a bakery right here. Hmm. Um, would you maybe, um, what, the question should be, why aren't you focusing on just the residences because you have zero carriers? Yeah, you are getting some carriers right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I knew that I'm like on the edge of having them. Yes. So, so therefore I, I knew I could afford it. Yes. And I agree. You've probably, not, pro not probably, you've definitely done the right thing here. Uh, I just wanted it to be said that you do have the feeling when when you are at the, at the edge of yeah. having and not having the carriers and you've done well here. Yeah, I think not at the beginning of your gameplay of this game, but you eventually get to a state where you somewhat know how to take care of your population. I had some, my fair share of st struggles here, <laughs> so I know what I'm talking about. Well, if, if you're a beginner and you uh, and you really have no idea how to learn that, you can begin with looking at how many of your carriers are in in production. If you press on that uh, amount of carriers, you also see how many of them are are uh, are in production, used for production. And if you have exact no well uh, not exactly around the same amount of uh, carriers free for carrying, uh, that is roughly the spot where where you are starting to get carriers yeah i think uh i think that, that is a little over complicated for new players i would just focus on building uh, a residence every single minute or two and that is also at, a the, good at the begin yeah. beginning of the match at least because you're expanding a lot during the, those times <clears throat> yes well it doesn't slow down later on does it you then That's true. Only produce the army which which feeds on even more of those carriers oh uh here's something that might uh, may blow, blow your mind i don't know if you knew that yeah here i go uh if you place a production building before it's being built to the carriers are uh, assigned the role that they will need to take after yeah i knew that i knew that uh, it is, great job it's actually a little weird that they do yes so uh, if, if I explain it poorly, if you place a bakery, immediately two bakers will be assigned to that building, even though that bakery is not even in its starting point. And form. therefore, if you really want to count your, count your amounts, your your numbers of your carriers, you there you will lose. Um, let's say the bakery costs uh, costs LRE two stones and two uh, planks. You will lose four idle carriers, not lose. Uh, it, uh -huh. It's gonna be just temporary, you know. You'll get them back when they finish carrying those materials. But um, yeah, you will lose them for a brief moment, and you will also lose those bakers. So you can expect six of your carriers to disappear from your carrier count. Yes. So you see, you're now breaking into the middle. Yeah. That is the easy side of breaking into the middle. The, the side doesn't have too many defenses. And you can right now march in. There is one spot in which when you wait, I think, for two minutes, and I hope I'm not wrong this time, 
you will get 10 more units, 5 of them will be uh, building destroyers, 5 of them will be healers. Uh, and the opponent actually does get a notification that you're doing that. So that he will true. probably right now or soon enough know what's up. Actually, he can now look at your uh, military score. It's already at some level that is too high for what you're doing. And he should know that he's e that you're either coming at him or at him. That is true. I'm not sure when the military, no, military score core updates to be honest because sometimes even though i have a lot of troops i have zero military <coughs> score oh that military score gives uh, is being updated when you kill a unit five ah, military score per unit i didn't know that all right i can build almost anything hmm yes time to expand for those extra coal mines not that i'm gonna need them but let's do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i you think the game is almost over. I don't think your opponent is aware of what you're doing, even though he does get a notification that you're there. I don't think he has anything to come for you. One thing I definitely want to focus on a lot more than I do right now is uh, setting my units under under numbers, min-maxing, uh, just, you know, mm -hmm. um, assigning numbers to my units, because it really uh, yes. makes you hell more effective while uh, while fighting with a uh, proper opponent. Yes, I, I love that you call them numbers, but we all see what your hotkeys are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up? That's true. That's true, actually. If you're, look, if you're watching it on console, I actually uh, I apologize. Because I, I hate when uh, PC players are oblivious towards any other, other platform. <laughs> Yeah, no, but but you uh, specifically on the top left have uh, plus uh, the uh, ah, yeah. check letter. Uh, that's true. That's, uh, that's true. That's true. But I've got my my keyboard set. To, set to, oh, that's weird. <laughs> it actually shouldn't be working because <laughs> 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 my keyboard is set to be in English. It's weird. Oh, so may, maybe only the plus is working and the rest isn't. I oh, know it's working. It, is, it definitely that? is. Uh, I'm using these sometimes. <laughs> well, and are, are those numbers? Are those actually numbers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we've watched the game. We've pr pretty much saw everything that you've done. What do you? What would you say you would make better for the next game? What would you improve? Hmm. I wasn't sure in quite a few stuff. I would definitely need to. Will reach the landmark and its uh, and its fulfillment sooner. Just one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't change anything about the way I've built. Yes. And yeah, I would maybe just I would play by the. Hmm. I would just play accordingly to, to the stats of my opponent. <laughs> That's the only reason yes. I would change anything, I think. Okay. I would maybe focus more um, on those residences because I got my idle carriers to zero uh, more than three times, I think. And that yes, shouldn't happen. I, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, though you, you showed it right now, you had 60 yeah. out of 63 yeah. carriers, uh, or 60 carriers and 63 people in production, which means you're right on the brink. Exactly. Of having carriers again. Exactly. Uh, I do think that you should maybe focus a little bit more on the residences, but you've played well in this game. It was all right. It could be better, but it you, was it was yes. um, it was shown uh, it showed how you should play, but it can be better. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of this map. Match. <laughs> yes, it also showed a tactic for uh, for this map. It showed that you can kill the starting defenders uh, with your free rangers. You don't need to lose one ranger, mm. but no, that's not 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 tragic yeah. at all if you do. I mean, uh, this opponent is really defenseless. He's yeah. I, oh. I'm. I almost feel feel sorry for him. He has one core. He has. Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, it looks it looks nice with all the greenery around, you know. But you you need to <laughs> use those spaces, uh, spaces, <laughs> open spaces for yes, building. Yes, pure, pure beauty. Yeah. Oh, he he built a second uh, warehouse. Yeah, well, did, yeah, he did. Go on a search yeah. then. I have to wonder, with his level, uh -huh. he is extremely slow. 
I think he uh, he played through the campaign. The campaign gives quite a few levels. Does it? And uh, yes, it does. And it's it level really thirteen. Teach you a lot. Yeah, it definitely doesn't yeah. teach you anything. No, that was a very well played match. Uh, I think you've done well. Not only that, you actually. Um, I, I think you had an idea in mind of how to play and playing the map at the beginning of the map. You enter the map and you knew you want to have uh, tools, you want to go for the landmark and then uh, go for weapons. Thank you very much for watching this video. It was an entertaining game and I think also a bit more educative than the first way that we did. Because it actually showed a feature of the map that you can now use in your own game. That is true. Thank you for watching, thank you for playing the Ranix, and see you in the next one. Definitely check out the community, uh, which will be linked down below under this, uh, under this recording, uh, because everyone is welcome in here and we would love to play with you. Have a nice one and see you next time.